Okay, as I have showed to you in the last video, I have created few more layers of bricks so that it looks great. Okay, so after that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an empty game object and I'm gonna name it, let's rename that. You can right click, rename and let's rename it bricks and I'm gonna drag all the bricks into it so that they stay organized. So I'm gonna select the first brick and by pressing the shift key I'm gonna press the last one and then I'm gonna drag it onto bricks. Okay? Now as you can see all the bricks are child of this brick. Okay? So this is where our all the bricks is. Okay? Okay, so now next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna add score to our game. Okay? Now in order to add score First of all, we need to add a UI text to our screen. So let's create that. Let's create UI and text. And as you can see here, it creates a new text for us. So let us position that on the position that we want it to be. Let's position it right here. Okay. Position it right here and after selecting the text, as you can see here it has a text property. So from the text property we can actually change what is displayed as the text. So let's make it score with a colon. And now from here we can change the font size. We can increase or decrease it. Let's increase it a bit so that it looks pretty good for our game. And for that you have to increase the size of this as well. Now you can increase the font size. I think this should be good enough. Okay. Now from here you can change the color. So let's click on that. And I'm going to select the white color. You can use any color you want. And here's the white color. Uh, and the white color is not actually looking very good. But I'm just using it as an example. You can use a red or green or whatever you want. Okay. And if you select this best fit, then it will be the maximum size of which it can be within this red transform. Okay. And while selecting the text, click on this red transform and select the anchor point as the left corner so that it always stays at this position relative to this position. And it doesn't change this position depending on different screen sizes. Okay. So now we have to access it from our script and we have to change the text whenever our actual score changes. Whenever our score becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, we need to change this score according to that. Okay? Now I want to do one more change. I want to say score colon 0 instead of score because the score will be 0 for the very first time when we start. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to create in create an empty game object and I'm gonna name it let's rename it to UI manager and this will take care of all our UI stuff all of our user element stuff okay this will take care of everything so I'm gonna add component new script and I'm gonna name it UI manager well, let's say just UI manager and then create an add and I'm going to double click it to open it in Mono Develop. Okay, so let's open it in Mono Develop. And as you can see, here's our UI Manager script. So inside this UI manager script, we want to do all the calculations and everything related to our UI. So in this thing, first of all, let me create a variable that will actually take care or take care of a score. So let's make a variable int score and let's make the value zero because we don't want to give it any value at the beginning. And let's make it Okay, let's make it like that. Then what you can do is, 
then we can make a function, then we can create a function which will increase the score. So let's make a function void increment score. So what this will do is this will increment the score and display it on the screen. Okay? So to increment the score we just need to write score plus plus. So that means whenever this increment score function is called the value of score will be increased by 1. So whenever this is called let's say this is 0 it will become 1 then when it's called it will become 2 then it is called it will become 3 or whatever. Okay? So what we need to do is from the game we need to decide when do we want to change the score. So we want to change the score whenever we hit a brick with the ball and the brick gets destroyed. Okay? So if I open the brick script, as you can see here we are checking whenever we are let's let me make the font a bit bigger. Whenever we are entering any collision, then we are checking if are we entering any collision with ball and then we are destroying the brick. So what we want to do is before destroying the brick, we want to increment the score and then we want to destroy the brick. Okay? So from here, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and increment the score. So to increment the score, we need to call this score plus plus function, I mean this increment score function and we need to run this score plus plus. But this increment score function is a part of this UI manager script. So somehow we need to access that UI manager script from this brick script. So how can we do that? In order to do that, here we need to create a reference to that script. So we're going to create public UI manager UI. So this UI manager will be a reference to this UI manager script so that whenever we want to call any function from it, we can call it from directly from our brick script. So we need to access it in some other way. Okay? So the very first thing I'm going to do is, as you can see here we have our UI manager. So let's go and add a tag to it. As you can see I have already added a UI tag to it. If you haven't, then just click on add tag and click on this plus sign. Create a new tag with name UI. Press OK. Then come to UI manager and tag it to UI. So why I will do that? Because I want to access this UI manager directly from this brick script and after accessing this UI manager I want to get access to this UI manager script that is attached to this UI manager. Because if I have access to this script only then I can call this function. Okay? If I have access to this script only then I need I can call this function. So that is why I have added a UI tag to it. Now what I can do is I can in the start I can say UI equals to game object dot find with tag. That means it will find the game object with a particular tag. And with which tag we want? We want to find the game object which has a tag UI attached to it. Okay? So it will find a game object which has a UI tag attached to it on our hierarchy. And as you can see, this UI manager has this UI tag attached to it. So it will return us this UI manager game object. But that's not what we want. We want to further access the UI manager and we want to actually access this script component within this UI manager. Now, if we want to access a particular component within a game object, then we need to use the get component function. Okay? So, by using this, we have access to this brick, uh, to the UI manager. Now, we want to write, oops, not this one, we want to write dot get component and this will allow us to get access to any component that is attached to this game object. Now which component we want? We want this UI manager script. So inside that we write UI manager then close it and write 
open and close parentheses. This is the syntax of git component. So by using this, we are getting access to the UI manager game object. And then by using this git component function, we are accessing the UI manager script within that game object. Okay. So now our UI element has access to this UI manager script and now we can call any function we want from this UI manager script. So what do we want to call? Inside this on collision enter 2D function, where after we are checking if it is tagged as a ball and then we are destroying the ball, destroying the break, before that we want to increment the score. So we want to call UI dot increment score. It's because we have this access to this UI, so we can call any function within this UI manager script. Okay. Now, before doing this, make sure to change one more thing. Inside this UI manager script, we created this increment score function not public. Okay. But if we want to access it from other scripts, then we need to make it public. Otherwise, we cannot access it. Okay. So make sure to write public before this increment score and everything will be good because if we write public here only then we can access it okay so now we can access this UI manager scripts increment score function from this brick script and now we can increment the score whenever the brick is getting destroyed but one more thing we need to do now is we need to display this actual score here in the UI text